What's up everyone? We got a new insane pet that you probably could tell by the title, but uh, we need help naming it. So uh, let's cue the intro and dive on in. Hey, what's up everyone? This is your first time here. My name is Shane. This is Small Town Exotics. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button like button and I don't know something to do with the bell but anyways go ahead and do all that stuff so we got a new pet it's a venomous lizard and it is called a heloderma poridum exasperatum I could be pronouncing that wrong but that you get the gist right so it's the Rio Fuerte beaded lizard from Mexico and uh, we need your help naming it I'd like to get all you people out there involved so why don't you go ahead and drop some name ideas in the comments and then we'll uh, pick the ones we like. The family members here will pick the ones we like. We'll put it in a, a random name gen generator, one of those uh, spin the wheel ones, and then uh, get the name for our pet that way. So go ahead and get throw a whole bunch of ideas down there in the comments. So like I said, we got the Mexican beaded lizard, and it is venomous. It's not like gonna kill you or nothing, but uh, it will hurt if you, if you get bit. So this is uh, an animal that I've read about and you know, encyclopedias for all you that are uh, young. We used to have these big giant books and there was a whole bunch of volumes of them. And uh, you used to get them at like Alpha Beta supermarket and stuff. And you'd get them on the letters. And uh, so I used to read about Gila monsters and stuff. And I was always fascinated by them, but we can't own Gila monsters here in California. I don't know if you can't own them anywhere, but I'm sure there's a permit. But uh, the beta lizards are their cousins and they actually get a little bit bigger and they look very similar and stuff so uh we got a beaded lizard and we got our beaded lizard from jonathan at taboo exotics so if you're interested in something like that go ahead and hit him up i'll leave all his links in the description down below man that guy's totally professional met me halfway uh he even turned our meeting into a fishing trip and i don't think he caught any fish he told me he got skunk but i don't know maybe he just didn't want to give me any fish to eat so Anyways, uh, enough of the jibber jabber. Let's go meet our lizard. I actually need to uh, take it out, change the paper, and do some other stuff so you guys can watch me get it out. I have it in a temporary tank over here. Come on, Mrs. Small Town. All right, so uh, I actually printed out all kinds of stuff on this guy. And, uh, oh, that's another thing with the names. You don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet. You won't know until later. But like I said, I never plan on breeding it. This is strictly for a pet. So we can name it whatever you want. I did have a few ideas. So, as you all know, if you guys ever heard of Miguel at Always Evolving Pythons or Jason over at JH Pythons, they each have one of these too. In fact, me, I think we all got it from the same guy. I know me and Jason did. But, uh, so, you know, Miguel's is named Venom. Uh, Jason's is named Carnage, that's both from Spider-Man. So, you know, we could go with a comic book name, but me personally, for those of you old enough, I, I really loved the movie La Bamba when I was growing up. And since this is a Mexican beat of lizard, I was thinking about naming Bob, like Richie's brother. You know, uh, Bob, he was the, the outlaw biker guy from uh, La Bamba, and he was really cool, man. He was my favorite character out of the whole movie. But anyways, you guys go ahead and throw the names in there, and we'll go from there. So... Uh, this is my beaded lizard, and I gotta do a little tank cleaning, uh, throw in the clip of him eating while, while I'm getting him out, and I'll, I'll keep talking, you guys can uh, keep listening. So we have fed him once since he's been with us, and we gotta feed him about every three days until he gets older, and then he goes on a once a week schedule, just like our ball pythons do. So. Ours is a little feisty, so I do wear a glove on this hand, and then I got a little baby snake hook right here, so you kind of want to wake him up. And they are a little cage defensive, I have noticed that. Come 
here, baby dinosaur. Okay, so. You can see he's biting my glove right now, but he knows he can't do nothing there. So. This is our baby dinosaur. Uh, the Heloderma family dates all the way back to like 23 million years ago, so these are literally a living fossil. These are dinosaurs. So, that's him. I'm trying to tame him down. And they are nippy, notoriously nippy when they're young. Their tails do not fall off. See, he's pulling pretty hard. He wants to climb. Yeah, I think Bob would be a good name. How about Abomination? Or how about something cute like uh, Rose or uh, Persephone or something? I don't know, throw out some ideas, everyone. Could name them like Juan or something. Juan, Jose, Paco, whatever you guys think. Throw your ideas out there. We'll have a little family vote and pick the like top four or five, something like that, and we'll put it in the wheel. Your skin is really bumpy like beads, hence the beaded lizard name. And if you see, they got a forked tongue. Show the tongue pretty good, Mrs. Smalltown. Mm -hmm. So I talked to an experienced keeper the other day who owns some of these and, and the breeder I got them from. And uh, I've been talking to a few people, but supposedly they're kind of nippy and feisty when they're young like this. And if you handle them, they will tame down. And I've seen a bunch of videos of people that have them on YouTube and they're almost like a puppy dog for some people so I've been uh, touching him a little bit each day just desensitizing him so he will calm down or her whatever it is whatever you guys decide it is see the stripes on the tail So if you notice their forked tongue, I mean, they look like little dinosaurs. They're way cool. See, and since I've been holding him, he's already calmed down a little bit. Not so bitey now. All right, so I thought I'd show you what I did. Um, I cleaned out his tank, got the old paper out, but I put uh, a little bit of paper towels one layer of paper towels on the bottom and then I'm using printer paper right now. I did have them directly on paper towels, but he's got like Freddy Krueger claws. So they kind of get stuck in the paper towels. So I, I just didn't like it. Um, so I got down one, one layer of paper towels, one layer of printer paper. And these guys require uh, fresh water every day. So I change his water every day. And as part of that routine, I've been touching him and desensitizing him a little bit, trying to tame him down. And I gave him a little hide, just something to like kind of crawl around on, move around. He goes, he goes under it. He goes on top of it. He goes and soaks in there uh, in his bowl. He takes baths and stuff, and they kind of like shed like little flakes. So you just clean it out and. Uh, you know, he went poop the first time since he ate his first time and all that too. I'm putting him on the hog nose feed schedule, which is uh, Sunday, Thursday, Tuesday, Sunday, Thursday, Tuesday, just like that over and over again. So he's going to be fed on their schedule until he goes to the once a week. And if you could see that, it's a bunch of slobber where he bit the glove earlier. So I'm pretty sure there's venom mixed in with that slobber. 
Uh, something about them is their venom glands are on the bottom. And they don't have traditional ones like snakes. They don't have like fangs that are hypodermic needles. So they have, they do have sharp teeth and they secrete the venom out in their saliva. So they actually have to bite onto you and kind of chew it into you. So it's not like a direct injection. So it's a little different. And uh, I got a leather glove on. So even if he does get through it, he's not gonna be able to get too much venom into me. And uh, let's try getting him out without the hook. Let's see how that works. He's already starting to calm down. <laughs> He's so calm. Yeah. He likes to huff and puff. Obviously he likes Mrs. Smalltown in the camera over there. So. Oh yeah, see if he can see inside the mouth, it's almost all black. And they, they are lightning quick. Do not take these guys for granted. They kind of move around slow when they're walking around but that right there that little strike they have is lightning quick so don't take these guys for a chump they are not chumps and that's his little home And I have him uh, set up on a little Inkbird thermometer that I won from Nivial Exotics. So thank you Nivial Exotics for that. And that just controls the standard. This is just like the standard Zoomed or Zilla or whatever kind of under the tank heater. Uh, it has a probe and then you know I keep, I keep his hot spot at 88. And then the um, ambient temperature in the room stays between like 78 at the very lowest all the way up to 82. Humidity in here is like 45 to 60 at all times. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we chose the Mexican beaded lizard because of the care requirements and husbandry fits right in with the ball python room here. So that was uh, one of the things that helped me to choose this animal, you know, al alongside of the lifelong fascination since I was a kid. So he fits right in this room. No special care needed uh, other than his own space and everything. So help us name them jump down there and throw some ideas out there and uh me mrs small town and the boys will all go through them and pick them and then we'll do the random uh, pick a name will deal on the next episode after this so what do we say at the end rock on don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell and we'll see you guys next time <laughs>